Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can use Datalink to transfer your iClone scenes quickly to Blender for high quality rendering. This workflow is the fastest and most efficient way to make changes to your scene, such as lighting and materials, which we'll explore in a bit. Let's start off by connecting iClone and Blender via Datalink to get this nice animated interior scene rendered. You can see that it consists of a number of different props, lights, and two different characters. You can access Datalink under the Blender Pipeline tools in the Plugins menu and via the N hotkey in Blender. After connecting them, I can select the characters and props in my scene and click on Send All to begin the transfer to Blender. After a brief transfer, you'll see all of the scene objects and materials are properly assigned, along with the characters and their animations. Let's take a look at syncing the lights next, as we don't have any yet in our Blender scene. You can transfer directional, point, and spotlights via Datalink, as well as HDRI textures. Simply click on Sync Lights to make them consistent. However, there may be variations in the lighting results, as the rendering systems are quite different between iClone and Blender. So you may need to still tweak things manually in Blender to get the results that you want. You can also use colored lights as well. Again, simply click Sync Lights to get everything consistent between the programs, and refine your lighting values in Blender. Your lights will appear in the Blender scene, and you can control their intensity in real time via the sliders in the data link panel. Or also by selecting them individually in your scene and adjusting them via their properties in Blender. You'll also notice that we have a nice HDRI texture that was also transferred over as part of our lighting setup. Note that if you want to switch your rendering engine in Blender, you'll want to go into the Auto Setup panel and under Character Build Settings, ensure that you rebuild the scene shaders for the best results. Okay, next let's take a look at syncing up the cameras. In this case, I've already set up a few cameras in iClone, and the current view can be transferred over to Blender in a snap by clicking the Sync Camera button. Note that this does not create a camera in Blender, it simply aligns the viewport to match that of iClone. So we need to manually add a camera in Blender. You can then hit the zero hotkey to enter into that camera view and click to exit it. If you press Ctrl Alt Zero, it will align the camera with your viewport position. From there, copy the viewport's focal length to the camera's focal lens value, and then we can get ready to start our rendering. Let's look at the reverse scenario now, sending a Blender scene back into iClone. You can do this to easily add more characters and animations to make your scene look more lively. You'll notice that currently, the Go IC button is grayed out, because we first need to convert our scene objects into RL props in order to use Datalink to transfer them. In order to select and edit the objects individually in iClone, you'll need to convert them into RL props one by one. For example, if I select this bed in my Blender scene, I can then go to Convert, ensuring that prop is selected in the dropdown. After that, the Go IC button is now available, and I can send it over. If you don't need to manipulate the objects individually in iClone, 
you can simply multi-select them all and convert them all into a single big prop object. In this case, I've done them all individually, so I need to multi-select them in my Blender scene before hitting the Go IC button to send them over. After that in iClone, I can quickly add some actor core characters to my scene along with any poses or animations I want. This is really one area where iClone excels in this workflow. It's so quick and simple to populate your scene with lifelike animated models for quick showcases. We can also quickly apply accessories to our characters and use the various motion editing tools to refine their positions and poses according to the environment. When we're ready, we can ensure that our actors are selected and hit Send Avatars to place them in our Blender scene. This is an incredibly easy and efficient workflow that allows you to quickly move between both programs to take advantage of the best of both worlds. Once you're done, you can naturally do some high quality rendering in Blender to make your scenes look their best. That's it for this tutorial guys, be sure to check out our other Blender data link tutorials for more on how to use this awesome tool. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.